Alright, so, as it stands right now, we are departing for Jonestown, Texas, which is a small town in the Texas Hill Country, pretty close to where I live. Today is the annual Swift Fest, which is a celebration of the native chimney swifts and the, uh, the role they play in our surrounding environment. With me, you can see some of them in the back seat, I've got a bunch more in the passenger seat, uh, are a number of my animals. To this event, we're bringing not necessarily just native animals, but some of the larger animals, the cool ones, and some of the smaller cute ones. Uh, I've got in the seat next to me two baby razorback musk turtles, a baby softshell turtle. On the floorboard, I've got my northern blue tongue skink, an adult three-toed box turtle, and in the back seat, I've got my Argentine black and white tegu, a hog island boa constrictor, and six uh, adult Madagascan hissing cockroaches. Joining me at this event is uh, my friend Michael Chaponi. He's been featured in a few videos before. He's helped me out with these kinds of events in the past. You may know him from my Herping in the Footsteps of Dinosaurs video, where him and I went out to the San Gabriel River in search of not only snakes, frogs, and other herps, but dinosaur tracks. Michael runs a channel called Expedition Paleo, where he divulges all of his paleontology intelligence. And so at this event today, not only is he going to be helping me out, but he's also bringing a number of native Central Texas fossils. So now that all that's out of the way, it's definitely time for me to focus on the road and get to Jonestown. I'll see you guys there. My life is a bit of a mess, but I like it that way. Between juggling school, work, dozens of animals, and a constant drive to explore, things can get pretty hectic. But one thing always stays the same a burning passion for wildlife, and a desire to preserve the biodiversity of our world through public education, conservation, and animal care. My name is Daniel Carter, and you're watching Afro Herb Keeper. All right, y'all, we finally arrived, and the animals appear all to be safe and sound. So, we're gonna go find our table, meet up with Michael, and then we'll get started. Setting up the table is always a bit of a process. You want your animals to feel secure, but they also need to be easily accessible and easily visible. For turtles, you can keep them in a clear container and throw a little vegetation in, and they'll do just fine. Cat carriers are a little harder to position. Michael is doing the same thing with his fossils. He just needs to make sure that no little kids grab one and run off with it. No, put me down. <laughs> I've actually provided reptiles for Balcones Canyonlands events a few times in the past. If you've been around on my channel a long time, you'll probably have seen one or two of them. And so with the table finally set up and flyers set out, both Michael and I wait for the crowd to start pouring in. This guy, his name is Blue. He's an Argentine black and white tegu. As an adult wow. male, he will uh, reach between five and six feet long. Oh, wow. He's not sure if he five wants to come out right now, though. Five and six feet long. Yeah. Wow. He's, He's like, a big no. boy. Hot. Do they bite or anything? Or? Um, a saying I really like is everything with a mouth can bite, but right. that doesn't mean it will. Okay. Right. Um, if you scare an animal, make it angry, it's liable to bite you. Okay. Um, but most animals, the bites are... Uh, not really that big of a deal. Okay. Uh, so I a just get off me so I can leave. Right. Yeah, exactly. A dog or a cat bite is going to be much worse. Right. Hey, it's hey, around buddy. good. What is he? He's an omnivore. Uh, he eats. His main diet at home is high protein cat food, really? um, ground turkey, eggs, uh, white fish, and occasionally fruits and berries. Okay. Three different species of turtle, all native to Central Texas. 
Uh, two large lizards, a boa constrictor, and a few insects. She is a Guadalupe spiny soft shell. Don't put your fingers too close to that mouth. <laughs> and you can tell why she's called a soft shell turtle. Uh, this one, while most turtles have their shell on the outside, this one's got it on the inside. This one's still a baby. The males reach about six inches long and the females can get over a foot. This one's name is Darth Maul. If you've seen the Star Wars movies, you'll know why. And you can actually tell this is a male because of his bright red eyes. The uh, females will have brown eyes usually. Fox turtle. Fox turtle, that's correct. And they're called that because he's not going to do it because he's very, um, he's very outgoing. But uh, the, the more shy box turtles, you can see, this is actually on a hinge. They can close themselves entirely up in their shells like a box. They're still juveniles. Okay. Um, when they were born, or when they hatched, they were about the size of quarters. Okay. A little bit bigger now. Uh, as full-grown adults, they will reach between four and five inches long. Live in water all the time? Yeah, they do. Yeah. These are um, one of the only species of turtles I would recommend as a pet. Really? Oh. They will they will reach a maximum of five inches in carapace length, Okay. Uh, which means that they can be housed indoors their whole life. Isn't that funny? Not even gonna come out like the cute lady. <laughs> wow. Here, let me have that. That's cool. <laughs> Her name is Scylla. She's a Hog Island oh. boa constrictor. She is about three and a half years old. Um, she's about five feet long and she'll max out at about seven feet. Does anybody want to touch her? If you'd like to hold her, go for it. That's what your camera's like. Default, David. Okay. Try again, see if she feels slimy. Does she feel slimy or does she feel smooth? It's, it's kind of like leather, right? Yeah, like leather. They do get very large, so if you're looking to get a snake like this, I would recommend a ball python like he's had, or a dwarf subspecies of bone constrictor like Scylla. I like that one. Now just as my YouTube audience picks favorites, the tegu does always seem to end up as the star of the show. This is Blue. He's an Argentine black and white tegu from South America. You can tell he's a male because he's growing little jowls on the sides. And those like to come out and they can be like, hey, you such a lady, right? Absolutely, definitely. A lot of people actually consider these to be one of the smartest species of reptiles in the world. That's because they can learn their names, if they feel like it, they'll come when called, and they can be potty trained. However, it should be noted that not every show runs smoothly or without any hiccups. Ooh, yummy diet. I like your diet. Oh, nice yeah. catch. He's, uh, <laughs> he's feeling quite um, enthusiastic about going back into his career right now. He's had a long day, but... Thank you all so much. That was awesome. Thank you. Since we'll be here all day, I took a lull in traffic to go explore the grounds a bit more. Here at Swift Fest, there are plenty of other educational displays and lots of local artisans and vendors to go around. By the time I'd come back, another crowd was starting to form. But this time it was for another reptile presenter, owner and operator of Austin Reptile Service, right, Tim Cole. If you've done some digging around on my channel, you'll know that he's in one of my very first ever videos. A short little documentary I did on why it's wrong to kill snakes. So I'm going to test your knowledge on some of the animals I brought today. And if you know the answer to the question, do me a favor and raise your hand. Let's start with, is that a duck you're holding? <laughs> cool. What kind of snake around here has red, black, and yellow rings around the body? Coral snake, exactly. Now what other snakes in Texas look similar to the coral snake? Oh, I'm gonna let Daniel get this one. <laughs> Forget the stupid rhyme. These don't live here. This is the Mexican milk snake. They come from the valley, South Texas. East Texas has Louisiana milk snake. North Texas has Central Plains milk snake. West Texas has New Mexico milk snake. But we in Central only have the coral. So even though the coral is venomous, it is just about totally harmless to you unless you do this with the coral snake. What am I doing with the snake? Squeezing it. Holding it. Holding it, exactly. <laughs> You're lucky enough to see a coral snake. Don't pick it up. That's all. It's not a threat to you. It can't bite you. It can't do anything to you unless you handle it. They are a grumpy snake in case you haven't figured that out by now. These guys have more attitude than a rattlesnake does. There's nothing about this animal that says rattlesnake. Absolutely nothing. 
There is no rattle on the tail. It's the wrong color. It's the wrong pattern. Nothing about this animal says rattlesnake. And yet, I would say three quarters of the time I go out on the rat snake call, they identify it as a rattlesnake. I'm like, not even close. Now he's so well trained. I'll say, walk open wide. Look at that. Right? <laughs> oh. Worst case scenario, if you got bit by a big rat snake, it's almost a paper cut. It's not an issue. You must be calling me from Africa or Asia. They're like, um, no, we live in Texas. Well, then it's not a cobra. Apparently, they never heard of the eastern hognose snake. The first thing they do when somebody gets close is they flare out their neck. It's not a cobra, but they spread their neck out. They hiss real loud. They throw their head up in the air with their mouth closed, basically asking you to go away, find something else to do, leave me alone. This is an eastern box turtle. Around here we have the ornate box turtle, the three-toed box turtle. And I know this is a male because he's got pink, orange, or red eyes. Females have brown eyes. Now I would not suggest touching the head. Fingers are worms, and they will eat worms. Now in Texas, these are protected species. Come on, that's your cue. Mouth open. And he wiggles his tongue back and forth, and the fish are like, look at that worm! And they swim right into his mouth. This is not his happy face. <laughs> his favorite temperature is 120 degrees. Right? He likes it hot. So when you live out in the desert, what's the most important thing you need to survive? Water, exactly. So this lizard has a very unique way of collecting water. On its skin are little lines that lead to the corner of its mouth. So when it's hiding in the rocks and the dew drops form on its body, it channels the water down to its mouth to get a drink. So this is an African bullfrog. He's about half grown. And unlike the toad who protects himself with poison on his skin, he protects himself by having big sharp teeth. What are those teeth? Are those teeth like fangs? Almost. Are they big? Oh yeah. Don't ask to see them. That'd be the last thing you ever saw. <laughs> so I supplied the snakes for season one and two because they didn't film season three here. But this is the main snake from the TV show, Dust Till Dawn. This is an albino boa constrictor. She was actually a rescue. Okay. Here we go. Got it. I get the head. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All four of us then. Nice to say you've held a movie star. All right, y'all. Well, I'm headed home. I would call that a very successful event. It was a good day. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a like. Uh, if you have any questions, don't be afraid to comment. And if it's your first time watching and you'd like to see more reptile-related content in the future, feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching.